This lesson is on trigonometry. It's the study of measuring parts of triangles. Let's look at the anatomy of a right triangle. So we have a right triangle, we have 90 degrees in the corner here. Across from the 90 degrees is always called the hypotenuse. Now, if we chose this tip here, where the lady is looking, and we chose that to be our angle of reference, so here's our reference angle, then exactly the side that she is looking at is called the opposite side because it's opposite to the angle of reference. The side that is adjacent to the reference angle is called the adjacent. So understanding these names is going to be really important in forming the proper proportions that we will need. Here's an example of a right angle triangle. Our angle of reference is A and our angle of reference is chosen in this way because our opposite, our adjacent, and hypotenuse are labeled according to it. In this case, at this point in time, angle A is 30 degrees. We have also measured every side and we're also considering the relationships between those sides. Now first take a look at what happens if I drag this triangle around. My angle stays the same. It's constantly 30 degrees, but my sides are changing. However, you can see that this triangle here is proportional to this triangle here. It's just as multiplied by a scale factor. So say this one side here, the adjacent is 3.8. I could multiply it by something here to get 8.3 in the same way that uh, the opposite was multiplied. So it's just uh, either expansion, enlargement, or um, shrinking of the same proportions. So since the proportions are the same between the sides, that means when we divide different combinations of the sides, we should get the same numbers for any of these triangles. Notice that that's true. I've programmed it to calculate the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse, the adjacent to the hypotenuse, and the opposite to the adjacent sides. So notice that the ratios are not changing at all, no matter where I place or shrink or enlarge this triangle, because as long as our reference angle is 30 degrees, our opposite over, over hypotenuse is always going to be 0.5. And same with the other ratios. So this will actually help us to find other parts of the triangle if we know that, hey, if we have 30 degrees here, I know my opposite over my hypotenuse is always going to be 0.5. So if, say, I knew my opposite was 1, then I, need, I would know that the hypotenuse would have to be 2, so that 1 over 2 makes 0.5. This is the essence of trigonometry here. You've probably heard of the terminology sine, cosine, and tangent. That terminology is merely a labeling of these proportions. So sine has been chosen to represent the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine has been chosen to relate the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent has been chosen to relate the opposite over the adjacent. The equation here could be written as sine of 30 degrees is equal to 0.5. Now check that on your calculator. All of these proportions are stored in your calculator. Type in sine of 30, what do you get? You get 0.5. Similarly, cosine of 30 should be 0.866, tangent of 30 should be 0.578, and so on. Now, everything changes if we change the angle. Notice our ratios completely change.
But if it's a different angle, then we can base it on that angle. So now if you could have sine of 10, and that should give you 0 0.177. So this is how trig is going to work. We're going to be looking at these ratios and comparing them to what kind of triangle we have. Maybe we have a smaller version of the triangle or a bigger version of the triangle, but the sides are lying in the same proportions. One way of remembering these ratios is SOHCAHTOA. So this helps you remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Here's a problem. We want to find the length across the lake. We have a lake, we can't walk across the lake, but we can walk in a 90 degree triangle to make the length of the lake one of the sides of our triangle. So in this case, the length of the lake is our hypotenuse and we don't know it, so it's called x. And say we measured this angle here to be 30 degrees. And the opposite side of 30 degrees we measured to be 6 kilometers. So, can we find the length of the lake? Well, we sure can. We know that when we relate the opposite and the hypotenuse, that was our sine from SOHCAHTOA, we know that we're taking the sine ratio of 30 degrees. And we know that the sine ratio of 30 degrees should be 6 kilometers over the hypotenuse x. Now we also know from the previous example that the sine ratio of 30 degrees was always 0.5. So this is going to actually help us because we'll be able to find the length of the lake by solving this proportion. And this is exactly what trigonometry is all about. We look at what sides we have. We look at our database of ratios that we know that we can call up. And we can relate our example to the known proportion that we know is always the same for triangles of 30 degrees. So 0.5 is actually 1 half, so you can solve this using cross multiply and divide, or you can just see that 6 over what would be 0.5? 6 over 12. We know x would be 12, so the lake is going to be 12 kilometers across. Let's look at some further examples. Here we have a triangle, a right triangle, angle 50 in the top corner. So the first step is always to label our sides. That way we can determine which ratio it is. I'll write up SOHCAHTOA up here. This just reminds us that the sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is the adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tan of an angle is the opposite over the adjacent. So let's label our sides. Across from the 90 is always our hypotenuse. Across from our reference angle is always our opposite. And the adjacent is what's left. So we've labeled our, our sides. Now you want to choose your ratio. So how do we choose? Well, sometimes you have all the ratios possible if, if all the sides are given. But here we only have two sides in question we're not really interested in the opposite, but we are interested in the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So we look for the ratio that relates the adjacent and hypotenuse so that we include our x in our ratio and we have all the other components filled in. So let's fill in our info to our cosine equation, which would be the cosine of an angle 50 degrees now this is not cosine times 50, this is cosine of 50. This is a language that calls up from your calculator the question of what is the proportion of 
the adjacent over the hypotenuse in any triangle that has a 50 degree reference angle. And we know that in our picture, our cosine of 50 is relating our adjacent, which is our unknown, over our hypotenuse, which is 20. So this proportion should equal the grand proportion that works for all triangles of 50 degrees. So let's call that up. Go on your calculator and make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. If it's in radian mode, you'll have different answers. So type in cosine of 50 and you get 0 0.643. I'm going to round that. And this is the proportion that works for this ratio for 50 degree triangles. And we know that that should equal x over 20. So now we want to solve the equation. Let's get x by itself. We could multiply both sides by 20. And we get 12.855. And let's just round to one decimal place for now. So 12.9 would be our x length.